Today we have a second generation iPhone SE with no touch functionality. This phone was sent to us by another technician. He replaced the screen a few times with no luck, therefore we will look into the motherboard to get this repaired. To make sure all bases are covered, we are going to disassemble the phone and try another screen. With a new screen installed, you can see there is no touch functionality. So now we are going to go to the schematic diagram to pinpoint the source of the issue. This device comes with a common issue. There is a line that is related to the touch functionality that gets broken or disconnected within the motherboard. It is pin number 15 on the touchscreen connector. This line is connected directly to the CPU and we are going to look for an area we can uncover on the motherboard to run a jumper to that line. This here is the perfect area to get this done. The name of this line which is connected directly from the CPU to the connector is listed below. SPI underscore AP underscore touch underscore CS underscore CONN underscore L. Now we are going to check with the multimeter to see if this in fact is the issue. So I set up my multimeter on diode mode and I'm going to go to pin number 15. I'm going to check if we have open lines. Here I press on pin 15 and the multimeter is showing me OL, which is in fact an open line. So I will run a jumper from this area to the connector. Now with the motherboard, I'm going to remove the CPU plate. I'm using 380 degrees Celsius. I apply a little bit of pressure and with my tweezers, I remove the plate. Now. I use an anti-static cloth and remove the thermal paste. I place the motherboard on the holder, then I remove the foam that is covering the connector and set the motherboard so I can start the repair. Here is the area that we can expose on the motherboard where the line runs. So I get my surgical knife and I gently scratch with the tip to expose the area. As I'm doing this, you can see that the, this here is the first layer. But we need to keep on going because we actually have to get into the second layer. If you notice, I'm already seeing the second layer. It has a brown tone to it. So I use alcohol and I continue to expose the area. This is the line we are looking for and if you see closely, it'll come up in just a second. As I apply alcohol, I can see the line. Right now, I have to be super careful though. I don't want to cut through this line because if I do, I will have to run another jumper. So I continue carefully. And I see it here, the copper wire. I keep adding alcohol and exposing the area until the line is completely in sight. I wipe with alcohol and a Q-tip. It's also good practice to blow air over it. And then with a brush, gently clean off the area to remove any leftover residue. Here I apply UV mask over the first layer to prevent creating a short and to ensure my jumper cable does not get attached to ground. If I don't cover the first layer with the UV mask, then I run the risk of my jumper cable getting attached and creating a short. Once the UV mask is applied, I cure it with my UV lamp. Then I add solder paste to tint the copper line. The copper line is what I am trying to expose in order to run the jumper from. I apply the heat at 315 degrees Celsius. I want the solder to attach to the copper line. The line has solder, so now the next step here is to get jumper wire and expose the tip of it. This copper wire has a coating, so we have to expose the tip. I add solder to my soldering iron and expose it. With my micro pencil, I am going to solder this wire to the copper line, to the line we are going to reconstruct. So as you see, the wire has been soldered successfully to the line. Now I add epoxy to cover the line and place it under my UV lamp to dry it. The next step is to run the wire to the other side of the motherboard. I repeat the process until I get to the connector. Make sure not to break the jumper wire and put it in a location that will not interfere with future repairs. If this device requires a future screen or battery replacement, imagine another technician damaging your hard work. 
Therefore, make sure it doesn't cross over areas where it will easily get damaged. As you can see, I'm not placing it next to connectors. I try to avoid setting it near places it can get disconnected or ripped. So here I am almost by the connector. I need to decide where I'm going to connect this jumper wire. I decide I'm going to connect it to capacitor C5770, which goes to pin 15. What I do is I remove the epoxy on the connector and then I add flux. Now I add solder to the positive side of the capacitor and I take the jumper wire and solder it to the positive side of the capacitor. From here I remove the leftovers of the jumper wire. Now I use UV mask to keep the jumper wire from moving. I place it under the UV lamp to cure it. So here's a closer look of our work. This is the final Picasso of this masterpiece. Now we are going to test the connector with the multimeter one last time. And as you can see, it now gives us a reading. So we assemble the phone and test the touchscreen. And voila, it's done. If you want to learn how to do this and other types of micro soldering repairs, visit our website for our upcoming five day in-depth micro soldering training at cellphonerepairacademy.com. We hope to see you in class soon.